So today I'm going to be doing the rounds with Dillian White, who is locking down in Portugal. How are you doing, Dillian, over there? I'm fine, aren't you? Fine. I'm good, I'm good. You've got the sunny weather, though. You've got the better deal, I think. No, you, you, you're at home with your family, so uh, closer to your family. So I think that's always a better deal in times like this, you know, to be close to your family and loved ones or whatever, you know, I'm, I'm 2,000 miles or whatever is away. So what are you up to over there? You're training hard? Because you were obviously due to fight this weekend, weren't you, in Manchester? You were due to fight for Vetkin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been training, but it's been, we've been training, but we have to keep taping the training and keep readjusting and stuff. So yeah, but I've been training. I've been training now for, I don't know. But it's, it's funny because you know, he said that, I didn't realise it was, it was this weekend. It's funny because if I was fighting this weekend, I'd have been in, in a much different place now from what I am. Obviously, I'm fit and I'm training, but now I'd have been peaked. I'd have been peaked and been um, tapering down. What was today? Wednesday, we'd have been having press conference today, wouldn't we? Yeah. Yeah. No, it would have been it would have been your work public workout today. Yeah, your yeah, public workout, then live press and then weighing, yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I'd have been in some I'd have been in the right mood as well. <laughs> <laughs> Time just goes, doesn't it, when you're when you're in this situation. Right, let's get on with this. Basically it's six three minute rounds. All you've got to do is answer as many questions as you can in those times. Okay? Have Round one, you ready for this? <laughs> this is live before boxing. Let's get on with it. What did you want to be when you grew up? I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. When, when I was, when I was a kid, I was going for all kind of craziness, man. So I, I wasn't thinking about, about what I wanted to be. I was thinking about what, um, what can I get to eat next because um, food was scarce and everything. So I had a hard childhood, so I, was, I wasn't thinking about what I wanted to be. I was thinking about surviving to the next day and uh, the next week or whatever, you know. What More were you than, like as a child? I was, I was. I was a tough child. I was a tough, hot child. I was a bad child, you know. I was, I was a good child, you know. I was, I was, um, I was a weird one, man, because I got thrown in the deep end as a child and I had to swim, you know, literally. And what was your, what was your happiest childhood memory? Do you think? I don't know. I haven't got one to be honest. Really, um, none. Okay. Is there? I can't think of. Anything from my childhood that um, I was like, oh, this was probably just going fishing with my dad, to be honest, or something like that, you know. And what about school? What... Actually, I do, I do remember my first childhood memory was that uh, my dad gave me a goat when I was like six or something, you know, and I was over the moon. My dad gave me, he goes, oh, this is your own goat, look after it. And I was like, I was over the moon. Actually, I do remember, yeah. <laughs> Did you name your goat? No, I just just get it just followed me everywhere though. I tell you that. <laughs> and everything. <laughs> How random was that? What about school for you? What was school like? Were you were you a good student or were you the one that sort of got into a bit of tr trouble? I didn't study going to school until I was like thirteen years old. I think thirteen years old is when I first started going to school. So I got into a hell of a lot of trouble because, you know, at that age everyone's bonded, everyone's got their little gangs and stuff and I come from Jamaica to here, I spoke differently, I looked differently, dressed differently, and then um, people thought it was funny to make fun of the way I speak, or dress or whatever, and then I still started knocking people out, and then it was it was just easy for me to knock people out instead of to, to, to go back and forth with them with, with um, the English style banter that I didn't get. Who did you look up to? Who were, who were your idols when you were younger? Hmm. My mum. My mum, my mum's a tough woman, you know, she had a bunch of kids, she worked three jobs, and she never stopped, even now, she's old, she's like, you know, I tried to get her to stop working um, in this moment and time, because um, she's an HS nurse, and she said, nope, I'm not going to stop, if I die out there, I die out there, you know, she'll go, listen, there's lots of old people that's come out of hospital and stuff, that needs help and need um, medical assistance and, and stuff. And no one didn't really get into them because of what's going on. So she goes, listen, in a few years, I'm going to be in the exact same position where those people are. And hopefully someone will help me if we ever go for a time like this. So she's always been my hero and, and no one else could ever take that, that spot. Yeah. No, That's no. brilliant. Um, we've run out of time. But one more question. If you, if you weren't boxing, without boxing, what would you be? Finish the sentence. <laughs> Um, I don't know, probably would have been, I don't, I don't, I don't know, probably would have been dead or I don't know.
or in prison or doing something crazy. I don't know. Boxing saved you. Um, round two. This is all about your boxing life. Uh, what are you most proud of in terms of your boxing achievements? Um, so this is a hard one because I haven't achieved what I want to achieve yet. So it's, it's a hard one to say. Probably winning the British title because I fought for it the first time and, and, and lost and then winning it the second and then fighting for it and winning it the second time. You know, probably probably that because it's the only title I went for and lost, you know, and I had to have a second attempt and win it a second time. What is it you want to achieve? Is it about is it about the money or is it about the titles? What is it? Well, you know, as you get older, it changes. It's always about the title, but as you get older, you weigh it up. You start thinking, when you're young, fights are fun. You just want to fight and get in and knock people out, but you have to make sense. You have to make business sense, and, that, and it's all about the belts as well, you know. So I want both. I want the titles and the money. What is the hardest fight out there for you, do you think? Mm. The hardest fight out there for me is probably taking a, a keep busy fight. You know, just one of those fights where you think, oh, like like the Marius Wack fight was, was, it was, it wasn't physically hard. It was just mentally hard because it was a keep busy fight. It was short notice. I wasn't in a great place. I mentally, I wasn't as switched on as when the big fights are there. You know, you're thinking you're switched on, you put yourself through hell, you're mentally ready. So for me, the hardest fight out there for me, just one of those keep busy fights, you know? What's been your sweetest victory? Probably the Ascaribus one, because the stuff that I was going for at the time, where my mind was, I never want to say, no, this guy is, this guy is, um, he's, uh, he's vicious, he's this, he's that. He this, and then I just handled him, you know? This guy's been boxing for 25 years, I've been boxing for 12 years now, and I'm still going out and handling these top amateurs, top professionals and stuff, you know? Um, I asked Anthony Joshua the same question, what was his sweetest moment of his career? And he said, actually, he's win over you so far. Yeah, of course he would say that, of course, because he, he knew you got lucky in that fight, you know. He knew, <laughs> of course he would say that, he got lucky in that fight. But, but for me, you know, I don't, you know, um, I don't really, I could have said, oh, Lucas Brown or Derek Cesaro, but, you know, what, um, I, I have a different mindset from these people, you know what I mean? Um, you know, it's not, you know, I do it, it's my job, but, you know, like, I just, I just think different from people, man. I'm not one of those ones that's like, oh my God, I knocked him out. Or not. That's not my mindset. No, I'm, I'm not that guy. Running out of time this round, but I'm going to ask a few more anyway. Rank these three in the, in the order of, of the best you think they are. AJ, Fury and Wilder. Fury, AJ and Wilder. You know, Fury is the only guy, as I keep saying, he's the only guy that's won all the belts so far. He's the only guy that's travelled and beaten good champions in their time, in their, in their hometown. You know, he went to Germany, beat Klitschko, went to America, beat the entire world, and he's held all the belts. So, you have to be the man at the minute. Like, he's not, I don't particularly like the guy, I think, so, you know, but he is what he is. I'm a, I'm a factual guy. I don't just speak BS for BS sake. I'm a factual guy. Anyone in the world of boxing that say a few, he's not number one at the minute, must be um, on some serious medication. Who, who at the moment have you got the biggest beef with? I ain't really got no beef with no one, man. You know, people, listen, if people leave me and my dogs alone, then there's no problem, you know. I ain't really got no beef with no one. If some people leave me and my dogs alone, I'm all right, you know. But when it's work time, then it's different. You know, when it's work time, it's different. It's work time. And a lot of these people, they just talk rubbish as well. They, they talk rubbish about me and say stuff about me and then like when I kick off then everyone's like ah oh, Dillian's this, Dillian's that, Dillian. So it is what it is man. I just want to get in the ring and give him this. I say I say that because obviously on social media at the moment that there's beef with, with Ruiz isn't there? Well it's not really beef, it's just factual, it's not beef. Like these guys, I'm just tired of these guys saying stuff about me and saying oh yeah I'm this and saying oh yeah I'm that and then when it comes down to it and I make an effort to make the fights, then they try to confuse people and try and say these things to try and make people think, oh yeah, Dylan White is scared of Dylan White is saying this. No, the facts are the facts, you know what I mean? So it's not really beef like that, you know, like, I, um, like with me, it's a funny one because like, you know, um, there's beef and then there's beef, you know, and sometimes I just think, are you really trying to beef or is it a boxing thing or what is it? So I just leave it alone, man, because, 
my head works differently from these guys. Which fight for you? Which fight haunts you the most in your career so far? Probably just a fact. I still want a loss, really. It's the only one that I want to, I want to, I want to have a rematch. And it's the only one I want to have a rematch and, and, um, and beat, you know? It's the only one that I can say, really. Moving on, round three. This is life after boxing, okay? How does life after boxing look for you, Dillian? Uh, I don't know. I try not to think about the after boxing while I'm still in it because sometimes it's easy to look too far ahead and start looking into the abyss and think, oh, yeah, you know, I've done this, I've done that. Um, you know, so I just try and, I, I try not to, obviously, I, I've had business, I've got business and stuff that's set up for after boxing and obviously, you know, I might stick around in boxing, be a promoter, a manager, a trainer. I, 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 I don't know, but... Do you think you'll stay in boxing and, and obviously you manage people now? Do you think you'll stay and do that or will you branch out thing? I will definitely stay around and try and help guys because I, I know what it's like to not have any opportunities and stuff. So I'll stay around and help guys and I'll just try and relax and just enjoy family and some more children and stuff and just, just take it easy, man. Who's the closest person to you? Well, you know, there's a, there's a few people that's very close to me, you know, um, there's a few people that's very close to me, um, my mom, my brothers, my sisters, very close, they used to beat me up when I was younger, but, you know, very close to me, and my right hand man, you know, um, you know, there's a few people that's, that's, that's close to me, though, obviously, I've been close with my team, obviously, my physios, um, my strength and conditioning coach, you know, because I spend so much time with these guys that they actually are the closest people to me, to be honest. The, the guys that, um, you know, we've had camps, after camps, but camp, you know, very close with them, you know. They've seen sides of me that no one else have. Even people who've known me for 15 years, I haven't seen because they're with me 24-7. Turn the kettle off, please. <laughs> Turn the kettle off? He just, he just makes oh, noise in the background. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, it's funny, it makes noise in the background. But they've become like family, don't they? Um, looking back, though, in yeah, your... That's one of them putting the kettle in the middle of the interview. That's what I mean. <laughs> I'll have one sugar, thanks. Um, <laughs> is there anything, do you think, looking back now, because you, you've had a, a really good career, anything in your career and your life that you would have done differently? I'd have started boxing earlier. I'd have definitely start boxing earlier, you know, because... At the age I started, I've already picked up a lot of bad habits and done a lot of things. And I spent most of my career changing those things and um, improving those things. Now that I started boxing earlier, it would have been the only thing I you know, the only style I know. And I would probably, but then you never know. I would have probably started earlier and given up by now with all the crap that I've been through. So you never know. Um, I start boxing earlier. I would have done some, some, you know, I would have just been a lot more active sports-wise. I didn't start no sports until I was like 16. No, no, you know, 16. I didn't start doing anything until I was 16. I was just a big bruiser, <laughs> knocking people out. That's it. We've seen you on MasterChef. Do you think you're branched out into more sort of reality TV? Can we see you doing more shows? Yeah, I might, I might become a chef. There might be something that I might go after boxing, just hoping... Um, When's Dillian's Dishes coming out? When's the book, cookery book? No, you know, I might, I might, I might do some, um, some sort of boxing related um, um, restaurant or something, you never know. Sounds good. Right, let's move on to your personal life, right? You ready for this? Uh, when you aren't working, you're doing what? Playing Xbox, spending time with family, um, keeping the dogs, you know, um, wearing the dogs and stuff. Um, um, maybe, what's I going to say? I might start doing some dog breeding as well that in my spare time. It's something I've been thinking about for a long time and I might start, start, start doing it as well. You know, so what do you think your best quality is, Dylan? I'm very adaptable. I'm very adaptable. You know, I can adapt in more situations and I can adapt to people's needs and, and you know, different things, adapt to different situations and stuff like that. You know, I, I realise, one of the realise in life is not everyone you meet are in your life is going to be in the same wavelength as you. So you have to be able to adapt and understand that, okay, this person might have this not have the same mindset as me, but they bring other things to the table. So because when I was young, I used to be like, oh, you know, this guy ain't got the same mindset as me. I don't care. This guy's a punk or uh, whatever. But now I understand that not everyone needs to be in the same wavelength as you to help you get to your destination. What do you think your worst characteristic is? Your worst trait? Probably 
too hot headed sometimes and just 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 um I ain't got a lot of patience for for people's nonsense, man. You know, I just That's not true. You've been mandatory for how long now? <laughs> no, but you know, what, what what can I do? You know, it's that that's out of my control, you know, that's out of my control, you know, you know, um it's out of my control, so what can I do? You know, what can I do? You know, I can sit and cry about it. I just get on with it. You know, obviously, ideally, I should have been champion by now. I should have at least fought for the belt by now. You know, but Deontay Wilder held the belt ransom and I don't know what it is. He must have some sort of information, the WBC, or they must just love him or something, but they just allowed him to do whatever he want. It was, it was the Wilder Boxing Council. That's what I call it. What do you think? What do you think you change? What's the one thing you change in boxing? Ah, uh, this uh, I you know, I don't know. I'd hope that I change that I show people that you don't need to come from a sporting background or or a great, you know, a great upbringing or you know, or, or be a sporty person to go out there and um change your future and your and and your life, man. You know, whether it's in boxing or whatever. Hopefully, I'll show people. That, listen. Hard work and grit and dedication and not giving up and being extremely tough and, and obsessed with whatever you're doing can get you to places. Who do you call after a fight? Who's the first person you phone? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know because my people is with me. My people is with me, so I don't really need to. The, the most important people in my life is usually at the fights. And if I fight away, I phone my mom and my sister. My mom and my, my sister Debbie because they they don't cope with the fighting well at all, man. You know, especially my sister. The whole fight week, she she goes into the thing where she gets belly pains and she just says, it's weird, but I keep saying to her, just don't come to the fight. So she still comes to the fight. So I phone them, you know, I phone them first, you know, because I know how hard it is to them, you know what I mean? Because that sister, she was like a mother to me growing up as well. So she sees me basically as her son, even though my brother. So I phone her and my mom. And then everyone else follow. Finally, what are you most proud of away from boxing? What's your proudest achievement outside of the ring? My kids. My kids. My kids, man. You know. Um, what kind of dad are you? I'm a firm dad. I'm a fair dad, loving dad and caring dad. But I'm firm. I don't. I don't mess about with with these children, man. You know. I'm a, I'm a firm dad, you know, because I know what it was like growing up. You know, obviously. You know, my dad wasn't there for me at, at times, and obviously my mom had to leave me for a long period of time to go to England. So I know what it's like when you don't have that around you. Just you just go off. You just, especially being a boy, you just go wild. You know what I mean? So I just try and protect my kids from that, and I'm affirm that yes means yes, no means no. You know, and just try and let them understand the values of life and things, and realize that your dad had to work hard for these things. So look after them. You know, I never had a quarter of what you guys had growing up. So don't take it for granted because I had to you know, go for a lot of pain and, and stuff like this. So I appreciate it. Round five, this is your fantasy round. If you could pick your next three opponents to fight, anyone, who would they be? Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder. In that order? Yeah. If you had, if you had one wish, what would that wish be? The WBC to give him a blasted title shot 10 years ago. Is that not something you, you change in boxing, though, the way that's all done? When I got into boxing, I thought boxing was one way. Then when I'm actually in boxing, I realised that, whoa, this ain't what you thought it was or anything close. People say, oh, yeah, you're a boxer. I want to be a boxer. I said, mate, you don't want to be a boxer. <laughs> you know, you might, it might look good to you from the outside, but... When you're in the game, it's, you know, it's, it's not easy, man. <clears throat> Who would play Dillian White in a film? Hmm. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. I <laughs> see, I don't think of myself. Have a chance, Dillian. Pick anyone. I, I don't think of, think of myself like that. I, I, I don't know. I, you know, literally, I, I just, I just, go, I don't really think, oh yeah, well, I'm some some big star. I don't I don't think like that. I just you know, I'm just quite you know, I'm just quite relaxed, man. I don't know. Maybe hmm. 
I don't know. Maybe one of my brothers, because they look at me, some of my brothers. What are your brothers? What about someone cool like, I don't know, Denzel Washington or... Screw Denzel Washington, man. He's got enough money and enough him. <laughs> I'm going to give one of my brothers a leg up. <laughs> Can they act, though? Eh? Can they act? Well, it's not very hard to act if you're acting like me, really, is it? Yeah. You have to go around shouting, let's go, baby. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's when they run shouting, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, if you could have a superpower, Dillian, for 24 hours, what superpower would you pick? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. Um, probably mind reading. Mind reading. Anyone's mind in particular you'd like to read? I'd like to read Eddie and Maurizio Suleiman's mind. Would you? Mm -hmm. That could be quite dangerous, no? No, it would be dangerous because I just grab Eddie and be like, mm, mm, go to sleep. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I think it's quite dangerously proud to have because you could end up finding out stuff about yourself that you, you just don't want to know and leave it there. No, um, no. It, it, sorry, go on. No, go on. It'd be good to know what people think about you, you know. I, I, you don't have to react to it or do anything. You just know that, okay, that's how you see me. That's how you think of me. Yeah, cool. That'd be handy. How many years do you think you've got left in boxing? <clears throat> I don't know, man. I, I have no idea. I don't know. You know, boxing is a thing where you can plan and hope and, uh, and do all of this other stuff and then, you know... I always take it one fight at a time, you know, literally in boxing. I have my destination to my next fight. If you notice, I never talk about uh, what I want after and what every time you guys interview me, I say, I don't know. Let's see what happens. We'll talk the day after the fight because you don't know. You might have a great training camp. You go in there, you fall over your knee, you hurt your knee. Lots of things can happen. So I just, I just take it. has goals. You have goals. You know where you want to get to. So you must have an idea of a path you want to take to get there. Well, yeah, you do have a goal, but I've had my goal for many years. I've been very close for many years, and I still haven't got there. So, so it might take me another um, three hundred plus days to get to the title. It might take me another two years. It might, it might never happen. You never know. So, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I have my goals, and I'm chasing them, or whatever. But I should have been world champion long term already. I thought people was a Right. People, you know, everyone has been pro as long as me has fought for two or three world titles and they, they've all lost, you know, they've all lost and, 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 and regained their titles and whatever. And I'm the only one. People who's been pro longer than me, just after me, same time as me. You know, I'm the only one who haven't fought for world titles yet, so I don't know. This is your final round. This is round six. This is all about lockdown. It's your boxing essentials. One film, if you could pick one film to watch on repeat in lockdown, what's your film? Probably, um, I'd pick two, probably The Transformers and Lord of the Rings and Hobbit, three. What, what song would you play? What, what would be your song? I play DMX all day, every day. If you could pick one boxing hero to spend isolation with, who would it be? Probably Muhammad Ali, not because of what he, he done in just the, 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 from a mental aspect to hear how he fought and why he did the things he did, not only in boxing, just the things he was doing in and around boxing and, and you know, how he was able to cope with fighting those big strong guys at the age he did and beating all those guys, you know, just it'd be very interesting to hear his coping tactics and, 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 you know, he fought, where was his mindset going into the standard listing fight, the Judge Foreman fight, you know, those kind of those kind of fights, you know. If you could watch one fight on repeat, what fight would you pick? Probably Manny Pacquiao versus um Jan Man Jan Manuel Marquez. That fight had everything in it. Who would be who would be your worst person to be in lockdown with? Johnny Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking, no, I'm joking. You know, David Higgins, I would kill him. I would, I would definitely strangle him because he talks so much BS, that guy. David Higgins is, <laughs> I, I, I don't think he does it deliberately. I think, 
Let's add another one if you had Eddie, Hearn and Higgins together with you. That would be funny. That would be funny. That would be yeah, funny. That would be funny because they'll be going at each other. They'd be like, say, Joseph Parker's never been down before. And Eddie would be like, well, Dillian actually put him down a couple of times. So, <laughs> you know, that, that just that load of banter, you know. No, they'd be funny. They'd actually be funny. Eddie Hearn and then David Higgins would be funny. That would okay. be funny. We've run out of time, but very quickly, what, what's the, your, it's a strange period for everyone right now, but what do you think you're going to take away from this period? What I'd like to, to, to see is people just unifying, people getting close and people working together and people realising that life is short and, you know, anything can happen any time and just, just everyone just works together and try and help each other and people stop being so bitter at each other and just try and come together, man, and just make things happen, you know. It's been lovely talking to you this morning. Thank you. And have, have a, as good a time as you can in lockdown in sunny Portugal. Thank you. Have a nice day and stay safe.